Hi and welcome to the course on how to build a risk management dashboard. So this is going to be a course that's going to take you step by step through the thinking process and the actual build process that I went through in order to build a risk management dashboard. So to begin with, in this lesson we're going to cover the, the requirements. So I'm just going to crack on now and go through a few points here. So the background here is, is that we're I work for that, a company that is an oil and gas producing company, but it could be any company that that produces um, or has got some sort of manufacturing facility. This example here is where we've had several critical equipment failures over the last few years. And these failures have resulted in quite a lot of downtime. So the plant's been unable to produce and unable to generate revenue. And they've also cost a lot of money to repair. So they've reduced our revenue and increased our cost, which is never a good thing. The root cause analysis rec into these failures uncovered that had we had better visibility of these risks, there would have been more opportunity for us to identify these risks and put some sort of preventative measures in place to help either reduce the impact of these failures or to eliminate the failures before they even happened. So there was an element here of management and people in decision making um, positions not understanding what the risk was of these defective pieces of equipment and then there was the resulting downtime. So the recommendation out of the investigation is to create a risk management process and an accompanying tool, so a dashboard. So we're not going to cover the risk management process, the defect risk management process, but what we are going to cover is the actual document or the actual dashboard that is going to be used to present information to people who can then act on that information and help hopefully prevent these critical failures happening in the future. So here's the, the requirements here. So the first one is to display a high level risk status. So a summary status that takes information from all of the different risks that we've got related to defective equipment and then summarizes that into a status, an alert status. So we want to be able to see in one place what is the, the status of the of our risk, how, how in terms of good, medium, bad or, or whatever, high, medium, low. Next thing we need to do is provide an overview of a risk matrix. So I've covered this um, uh, on the first screen you've seen here, there was a, a risk matrix. So we're going to use a risk matrix and we're going to be able to superimpose on that risk matrix the number of defects that are sitting in each of the different areas, high risk, medium risk, risk and low risk. The next thing is to provide the ability with this matrix to drill into the actual work orders that are um, underneath the matrix. So each work order is created whenever there's a defect in place to go and repair that defect. So we want to be able to click on the matrix and see the related defects and the related work orders and the information related to when the defect's going to be repaired, if it's overdue, if that repair's overdue, etc. Uh, the fourth requirement is to provide analysis of pre and post mitigation risk. So in this example here, I'm going to the sli in slightly more detail later. In this example here, we've got a risk assessment carried out when we first identify the defect and then there's a risk ass assessment carried out once we've put some mitigation in place. So mitigation could be something that's going to reduce the likelihood of the failure or reduce the likelihood of the consequences or even reduce the severity of those consequences. So this is an example for this process. It may be that when you build your risk matrix, you only carry out one um, piece of risk analysis, which is fine. You can still use this. You can still learn from this. But in this example here, we're going to display the pre and post mitigation so we can see how many risks have we mitigated and reduced the, or how many defects have we reduced the risk of and then finally, we're going to provide a trend. So we need to be able to see uh, the trend over time. So are we reducing the number of defects at the site or are we increasing the number of defects? And how are these defects split by each of the different risk groups? So we don't want to be in a situation where our overall defects are reducing, but the high risk defects are increasing. So we want to be able to see that. So that's a high level summary of the requirements. So we're going to go through, this is my five step process for building an effective dashboard. And we are going to go through step one and two and three. Uh, step four and five we'll, we'll not cover in this particular course, but we're certainly going to define the requirements. We're going to build a model, which is going to be 
how the data relates to it, how the, the data relates to each other and the measures and the calculated columns we need to support this um, the, the requirements and then we're going to go and build it in Power BI. Okay, in terms of requirements, we're going to split it into three different screens. So the first set of requirements is going to be related to a risk overview status screen. And that's going to display a, a high level risk status of which is a, a, a summary of all the risks at the site. And we're going to go and provide an update on the status of these repairs. So on this screen, we want to see what's the overall risk status at the site. And we want to also see a high level overview of what the high risk or the highest risk um, or the work orders or the plans to go and remove those high risk defects are. So we want to be able to see um, that information so that we, we know if they're under control or no. We want to provide an overview of the number of work orders or defects in each area of the risk ranking. And we also want this, um, or the, the purpose of this particular report is to be displayed on a large screen in an office or at the site. So, um, and it may also be in a mobile device. So it has to be something that's big, not a lot of detail on a big screen and on a mobile device. And this is really aimed towards the plant manager and other senior managers and stakeholders. So the next requirement for a screen is going to be a screen that's got the ability to review the list of work orders. So we need to be able to drill into the detail and see the work orders and understand um, when we click on the matrix, which work orders are in each of the different risk areas. And we also want to filter this by department. So we want to know um, which supervisor or which department um, we want them to be able to go and filter this report so they can see that the work that they're responsible for and they can understand how um, how that's fitting into the schedule, how if any of it's overdue, and they can then look to go and build a schedule to go and remove these or repair these defective pieces of equipment. And then the next screen we're going to cover is going to be looking at pre and post mitigation risk analysis. So looking at the, the risk as it was reported and then the risk as it now stands once we put some template mitigation in place. And then finally, we're going to go and provide a trend of the number of defects oversight. So that's going to be our, our three main screens, actually four main screens. We're going to have a screen that shows an overall risk status. We're going to have a drill down screen that shows us the list of work orders. We're going to have a screen that shows the pre and post risk analysis. And finally, we're going to have a screen that shows a trend over time. OK, in the next lesson, we're going to start looking at modelling and what some of the key concepts are around about our risk management process.